thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, our guest presenter today is Joe Klapach. Uh, some of you may know him from his time at the Albright Library and now at the Carbondale Library. Um, he's a, a reference clerk and also has been doing a lot of research on his own on the history of firefighting in Lackawanna County. Um, in a past life, Joe worked as a, a trainer and a supervisor for the, emer the emergency call center in Jessup. And before that, he had worked as a news, a, a news, news reporter and a signer um, for WBRE, I think. Um, but I will- WNEP. WNEP, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but I will, I will turn it over now to Joe um, for the history of firefighting in Lackawanna County. Thanks, Sarah. And I happen to be broadcasting from the palatial second floor of the Carbondale Library right now, which actually you could uh, trace back to the beginnings of the fire departments in Lackawanna County. The very first fire company here in Lackawanna County was when it was still Luzerne County. Here in Carbondale, it was called Rescue Hook and Ladder. They were uh, organized back in 1843 and they actually didn't really have a firehouse per se. Uh, from what I understand, the old cart used to sit down here on Main Street, right below from where I'm uh, here. And if there was a fire, uh, the people from the town that were members of the fire company would go and grab the cart and run over to where the fire the fires were. Uh, that company though only lasted until 1850. And around that time, there was some, a bad fire that hit the city. And uh, the city, which was a lot smaller at the time, uh, got together to try to figure out how they can start a new fire department. The Delaware and Hudson actually stepped in and they gave the city four little carts uh, to start four new fire companies and four basically sheds, one in each uh, ward of the city. Uh, there was Neptune number one in the first ward, uh, Eagle number two in the second, Rescue number three in the third, which they were actually located, if you're familiar with Carbondale, where the convenient is on South Main Street, their parking lot was where the Rescue number three uh, shed was, and Goodwill number four, the fourth ward, and they were organized back in 1850. They only really lasted for about six years, and the uh, apparatus that they ran at the time was what they said, little pieces of nothing. Uh, it was a four wheel cart and a hand pump and the firefighters could barely get a stream of water uh, across the distance of the, uh, of the street at the time. And of course, back then the streets were all uh, covered in dirt and mud and things like that. So they weren't even easier to, uh, to pull. The companies didn't last long. They lasted until about 1856. The first one being, uh, the first one disbanding was the Neptunes. Neptunes actually uh, published uh, a notice in the newspaper saying that there's not much in, for, in, the, uh, in it for them. They were fighting fires. And uh, I think the, the city was basically just saying, okay, uh, we'll give you a break on your uh, city taxes. Well, a lot of the people didn't own property, so it was not much of them for them, and they kind of disbanded. So did uh, the Eagles and then the Goodwills. There was a huge fire around 1855 that destroyed a low, a big part of the downtown, and they just, the people from the city of Carbondale decided that they've got to get together and put together a fire company. At the time, uh, they ordered a button pumper, which was a big old hand pumper, uh, and they organized the Columbia Number no. 5. Columbia Number no. 5, which still lasts today, uh, was organized 1856, and that hand pumper, when it arrived, it arrived actually in Scranton, and then it was trained up to what they call the cottage, which is probably down around Childs, and the firefighters actually went <laughs> down there and pulled the uh, wagon here to Carbondale to start things off. Uh, the Columbia's actually, again, talking about here being at the Carbondale yeah, Public Library, the, Carbondale, the Columbia's actually the sat on this property the before the library was built. So the view that I've got right now was a view that the firefighters back from 1856 to about the 1970s had of Carbondale if they were up in their meeting room. Uh, 
That company lasted like is still in existence today. However, they are now they're not based at the fire headquarters here in the city, which is just next door. Uh, they actually are over in the Trinity Club, which is about two blocks away. What happened in the 1970s when they uh, when the city got government grants to build the new fire headquarters, uh, it was all federal grants, and they could not keep uh, they couldn't keep a volunteer company in a building that was uh, put together with federal grants. So Harry Cook at the time, who used to also be a teacher up in uh, the Lackawanna Votech School, he was a, uh, an electrician by trade, but he was a firefighter and former fire chief here in Carbondale. He started looking and he put the Columbia Hose Company along with the Ancient Order of Hibernians and the Knights of Columbus into a building called the Trinity Club. And they do still have some of their old memorabilia and inside uh, the Trinity Club. And some of the memorabilia is in the book that I did a few years ago. Luckily, uh, they, they gave me open access and uh, they have a lot of their history, which is great to, to know. Now, recently, uh, through some of my research, I found out that there were two companies that did not show up in my Carbondale book. There was a company that was organized in 1857, a year after the Columbia is called Assistant Fire Company Number no. 6. They literally got to the point of organizing, but never really did much. There was another company that showed up in 1868. Surprisingly enough, it was called the Music Host Company Number no. 2, but had nothing to do with the Borough of Music. As a matter of fact, at that time, Music wasn't even known by that name. It was known as Marathon. So uh, Music, from what I can check at that time, was named after it being the Music Mountains, and there was also the Music Powder Company in the city of Carbondale that uh, believed that that's where the name came from. In between there, right at uh, 1861, there was the Lackawanna Hose Company of number one and the Juvenile Hose Company number seven. Both didn't last long. Lackawanna lasted maybe about a year or two, and Juvenile was around for just about 1861, and that was it. What happened in 1861 is, and this happened in Scranton also, where they had some fire companies, but in 1861, a lot of the fire companies disappeared. Uh, the firemen being, of course, volunteers, were also were the first to volunteer for the Civil War, and they all disappeared. In Scranton itself, uh, most of the companies dis disbanded, except for the Franklin, which was actually in Hyde Park Borough at the time, and not even in Scranton. There was the Washingtons down in Scranton that kind of hung around for a while, but then they kind of... Uh, fell apart after a few years. They they were renamed the Lady Washington, and then they disbanded. Uh, here in Carbondale, just getting back to here in a sec, a, few, a little bit. Uh, Columbia stayed until about 1892, and then there was a boom in 1892. The first one being the Andrew Mitchells, who still uh, who are still here. They their building was finished in uh, on March 2nd, 1893. That building still stands about two blocks down the street from here. And what's neat, if you ever get a chance to take a look at that building, uh, I still would, 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 would love to see that building become a historical site. Uh, it's pretty much unchanged from back when it was built in 1892. Uh, there are some changes to the door. Instead of a round arch, it's a square, built, a square door and things like that. But if you go up to, upstairs, you, when I got a chance to go upstairs, it was on a cold evening night, rainy night, and it was almost like stepping back into history. When the building was built, one of the things that they did over there was they had, and I thought this was wild because I was looking all around the building at that time, and I said, you know, it'd be neat. When the building was built, they had a, an oak bookcase, and they asked people that when they were coming to the firehouse for the grand opening, if they wanted to bring a gift for the fire department, they could have brought um, a book for the, oak, for the oak bookcase. And I said, it'd be neat to see if that was still, and I turned around and there's the bookcase with all the books still in it from 1892. Uh, one of these days we want to go and take a look and just curious to see what is actually in there and what the, some of the titles are. Uh, also in 1892, the Cottage Hose Company uh, organized, which are still around. But that company burned down twice already. Uh, this is like the third firehouse that they had. They were burnt first in 1915. 
And the fire started in the middle of the night. And when it did, there was an Ontario and Western train locomotive going through town. And they spotted, were the people that f spotted the fire. They ended up getting out of the train, the, the uh, engineer did, to rescue the horse and the carriage out of the building before the building ended up collapsing. Uh, there was another fire in 1959, and surprisingly enough, once again, the fire engine was, it was a brand new fire engine that they just got within the past year, and a neighbor actually ran into the building, pulled the truck out just as the building was collapsing. Uh, the, another company that hit Carbondale back then was in 18, uh, well, 1893, the Hendrick Hose Company, which was part of the Hendrick Manufacturing play, Plant uh, Group. And there were also a, an E.E. E. Hendrick hook and ladder company, which had its start here in the, what was the Columbia building. Uh, they were trying to put a hook and ladder company together. They set up in with the Columbias, but there was infighting and it didn't last long. Uh, they didn't feel that two companies could be running out of the same building. One of the people that were an organizer of that, his name was Abe Sam. He was a businessman here in Carbondale. So he went and they started another company called the Hendrick Hook and Ladder and Chemical Company. And they were located over on River Street. Hendrick Hook and Ladder and Chemical was the first hook and ladder, where it was the first chemical company here in Carbondale. It was also the first um, paid company. And it was also the first company to run an ambulance. And there was controversy with the company. Uh, someone on council did not like the members of the, of the fire company and kind of did everything they can to fight them. Uh, the fire company found out one day when they were coming out of their building that there was a building going up right at the egress of the building because the property was sold and nobody told them. Uh, they used their horses sometimes to pull a dray wagon in order to raise some money for the fire company. And when it was at the train station one day, someone let the tr horses loose while they were going to get the items inside the station. The horses took off and they ended up running across the train trestle and breaking their legs. So they lost their horses at that time. And uh, the company finally did, they lost their home and the company had stored the ladder wagon, which they had in an old warehouse. And surprisingly that warehouse was going up for sheriff's sale and nobody knew about it until the, the constable came to uh, take uh, confiscate everything that was inside the building. And it just happened that one of the city councilmen actually had an automobile, one of the only automobiles in town. And uh, he actually got it out just before this constable showed up to take, uh, take over everything that was in the building. And one of the things that was taken was their old ladder wagon. Uh, they tried to bring back the Hendrix year after year, and it was like about a three-year uh, fight with the city council, and it never happened. And finally, uh, the wagon got sold. It was supposed to go to Holmesdale. It was supposed to go to the cottage, and it ended up that it was all stripped, and it really didn't go anywhere. The horses went off to a farm. And it was funny because when the horses actually were brought back into town, uh, by the person that owned them, whenever they heard the uh, alarm going off, they would start running to the fire. Uh, a lot of the horses were trained that way. Uh, after that, there were a few other companies here in, in the city. The other one, the last one being the West Side, which building still stands, they never really had a truck. And that was built primarily uh, when construction was going on the old viaduct here in Carbondale. I mentioned Scranton before, and the first company in Scranton uh, Scranton Borough actually didn't come until about 1854, which was 11 years after the first company here in Carbondale. As a matter of fact, there were uh, five companies in Carbondale before the first company even showed up in Scranton. And the first company down there was the Neptune Number no. One. If you've ever gone to the Anthracite Museum, you saw the piece of apparatus that they used to use. It's still on display over there. And that piece has actually gone through a lot over the years. Um, Benjamin Troop actually took possession of it after the Neptunes disappeared. Well, even before that, let's go back a little bit. Uh, the Neptunes were organized in on July 4th, 1854. Uh, it was 
a combination of the Delaware Lackawanna and Western and the Lackawanna Coal and Iron Company that got together that helped organize that first Neptune number one. And it was with the understanding that if the fire occurred on their property, they got preference uh, for coverage. That company, uh, the, the company itself was located around Lackawanna Avenue and Adams Avenue. And they were around until just after the Civil War. And then they disbanded, actually part of the Civil War. The Civil War also had them disbanding. And after the Civil War, uh, Philip uh, Robinson from the Robinson Brewery ended up buying the wagon and he sold it, made a $500 profit, selling it to what was going to become the new Neptune number two. And they located it over in South Scranton, which they would probably be the oldest company now, which is still Engine 2, which is up on Pittston Avenue now. But back then they were located down on Cedar Avenue. Uh, the Neptune overall, Neptune number one, again, has its roots back here in Carbondale because it was started by uh, C.W. Rosler, who was a member of one of those early eight companies organized in 1850, the Neptune, and that's where the Neptune name came for, from down in Scranton also. Uh, in, well, like I said, uh, when the Civil War hit, a lot of the companies disappeared. Uh, there was the Neptune, there was the Naogs, which they disappeared. And there was also a company called the Niagara's. The thing about the Niagara's was it was all, the company was made up entirely of married men, except for the Torchways. And after the Civil War started, that's one company that never came back. The Naogs were known as the Silk Stockings. Uh, they were the uh, educated businessmen uh, from downtown that would handle any calls over there. They also had a lot of, uh, they were also financially well off, let's put it that way. They were as well as the Crystals. Crystal number four was located across the street of what is not, of what um, it still stands, of course, the cathedral, but are in the area of where the Linden Bake Shop used to be. And uh, we were talking just prior to this, uh, they had, had gathered a, a working relationship with a Monhagen hose company up in Middletown, New York and would travel up there a lot. Uh, the Franklin Engine Company over in Hyde Park uh, was the first company up there and they lasted throughout the entire Civil War. They were organized July 3rd of 1855 and their firehouse actually burned down also back in uh, 1869. It was about three years before they actually got a firehouse uh, rebuilt. Uh, one thing that should be noted also is that a lot of the fire companies outside of the city of Scranton uh, have their, some of their roots back into the city of Scranton because when they organized back in the 1800s, they got a lot of their uh, hose reels, hose carts from the city of Scranton and then uh, used that equipment. So everything comes back to Carbondale, but then to Scranton and then out to the other towns. Uh, one of the things that happened with the Franklins though, that they're most known for, happened uh, in 1881, that being the uh, St. Patrick's Orphanage fire. And that night, the, uh, the talk was that the Franklins were going, because it was, they were located on North High Park Avenue, only a few blocks from the orphanage. And as they were going, they were in pitch black, and it's kind of hard to imagine West Scranton just totally dark at that time, and the big ruts into the roadway with the uh, uh, muddy roads but they made it over to the uh, orphanage. And of course, a number of children died in that fire. Uh, one of the things that happened down in the fire companies in uh, Scranton were junior fire companies. Uh, the younger kids that were members of the Franklins, of the Crystals, of the Naogs, they started junior fire companies. And also up in uh, Providence, you had the Liberties. And they had uh, a company also. The Liberties, uh, company ever ended up became, junior company became the Columbia's and they were in the same building for years uh, as a matter of fact what's amazing about the Liberties and the Columbia's but the Liberties even more which was the home company that building that they were in stands it's on uh, East Market Street as you're going down towards the Lackawanna River now 
back in the 1800s, that building, every time the city would go around town inspecting the building, inspecting the fire companies and doing their annual inspection, that building was condemned. Uh, the building was old and down in the basement of the building was actually a police precinct. The police precinct uh, was known as almost a black hole. It was dark down there. It was dingy. And the um, jail cells for the precinct were located right under the wooden floors of the horses from upstairs. So you can imagine the stench and the smell and uh, everything else that was dripping through the floor uh, over there. Uh, the Franklin, their uh, juniors ended up becoming the Columbias, which were located just off Main Avenue. The Nayogs uh, became the Phoenix Host Company. Uh, back in 1868, uh, Captain Keeley, uh, who was one of the heads of the fire department, actually went out to New York City and in hopes of gathering uh, a hook and ladder company because there was none in the city at the time. Uh, you had steamers at the Crystals and the uh, Naogs, those being, of course, like I said, the companies that had money. And the other companies just had their hose wagons and that's pretty much about it. Uh, they would end up uh, pulling the wagons to wherever they had to go to the fires. So Captain Keeley ended up bringing back three uh, ladder wagons for the city, well, for the Scranton, for Hyde Park, and for Providence because they were still individual uh, boroughs on, on their own. Unfortunately, while they had the equipment, they didn't have the people, and those ladder companies didn't really last long. Uh, over in uh, Hyde Park, the ladder was located at the same building as the Franklins, and they named that company Mohawk Hook and Ladder. But again, it didn't last very long, and the ladder wagon basically sat in that building for the longest time. Up in Providence, you had uh, the Providence Hook and Ladder, and again, they sat there. As a matter of fact, there were stories about how um, people would have would take items off of that, and they were fighting council at the time with that uh, company also to the point that they got the ladder wagon and chained it to a tree outside one of the councilman's uh, houses because they weren't happy with that this piece of equipment was just kind of sitting there. The one that got the most activity was the uh, company downtown in Scranton, even though most of the time the wagon sat in the rail yard. Uh, the company was uh, Keystone and then uh, Goodwill. And this is a point a lot of you are historians. You're usually looking in books and you're looking at your old books. And this is going to be one point where I give you a little bit of a lesson that I found. Don't believe everything you read. In uh, some of the old history books on the city of Scranton and uh, also uh, Lackawanna County, if you look in the fire company pages, there's talks about a fire company called Rapatone Hook and Ladder. Rapatone Hook and Ladder actually never existed. In every single one of those history books, it talks about how they went to uh, city council and acquired uh, a, a plot of land next to a butcher shop. I believe it was around around the Seventh Avenue area, and they ended up uh, putting together a fire company. And what happened when I was doing my research, I was wondering where the name Rapatone came from. Uh, you looked at everybody else. And Naog, of course, we all know that there's a numerous uh, locations called Naog in the city of Scranton now. Uh, you had companies like Phoenix and Neptune, which all, they're pretty common names, you know, th across the country. But where did Rapatone come from? And in looking, if you go to the newspapers on the date that's mentioned about when uh, the members went before council, the actual name was Keystone Hook and Ladder. So it, apparently it was with scroll handwriting the way it was. Someone misread it, put it down as Rapatone in one of the early books. And each year when they would do a new history book, they basically just copied it. Uh, one of the companies I'd like to mention uh, goes back to 1873. And what surprises a lot of people is that in 18 
1973, that ho that ladder wagon that used to sit over at the um, uh, how fitting we've got a siren now on a uh, thing with the uh, fire department as the Carbondale fire department go out to a call. I kind of figured that would happen. Uh, but anyway, in 1873, uh, three black families went before city council in the city of Scranton and asked if they could have the old uh, ladder wagon that was sitting over in the tra ra uh, train yard. And it was granted to the, uh, the families and they started Union Hook and Ladder. Union Hook and Ladder lasted about five years and there were, they, would, uh, they were part of the fire department. They uh, had all kinds of activities and they went to a lot of fires. Uh, one person that was a member of that, one of the families and also a member of that company was a gentleman named Lincoln Tillman, who over the, you know, in my research, I found this guy was fabulous. This guy was very interesting. And unfortunately didn't really like to talk to the media uh, that being the newspapers at the time. Every time they wanted to talk to him, his response was always, I don't do anything special. I just go out there and fight fires and that's it. And he never really wanted to talk. And unfortunately, it wasn't until after he retired because he was a volunteer with the unions. And then after the union uh, hook and ladder disbanded, uh, he became a member of the Phoenix. And in 1901, when the uh, different volunteer fire companies in the city of Scranton all became the Scranton Fire Department. He was actually one of the first paid firefighters. And uh, he served in two, about the 1930s, I believe it was. And he, he did, it wasn't until after he retired that he sat down with a reporter from the Scrantonian Scranton Tribune. And the information that came out of that interview was fabulous. It was just like listening to liquid gold. I mean, he was talking about the union hook and ladder and how, well, they didn't have much money. So they had to pull that ladder wagon, which is pretty big, uh, all over town whenever there was a fire. He mentioned how when they got to different uh, fire locations, there were times that he, they, their people never even had a chance to use their own equipment because they just kind of had to go on the side and catch their breath a little bit because they, they would pull it all over the place. Plus, back then, the city of Scranton, well, Scranton Boroughs, you know, which was later than the city of Scranton, uh, their streets were filled with, it was all dust, dirt, and if it rained, it was mud. So it was like a lot of ruts from all the wagons that would go through. What, to make it to the fires a lot faster, they would uh, pull the wagon and pull it along the wooden sidewalks of the downtown. Uh, they also... He, when he became a paid firefighter, there's stories about how he, he he didn't really want to see people get hurt. So no matter what, he was always running into the building to try to rescue the people. And at one point, uh, there's a story downtown Scranton. There were about a dozen horses down in the basement of one of the buildings. He didn't want to see them die either. And he would bring out each uh, horse until it got unsafe. He got about a half dozen of them out. But many times he was overcome by smoke and he would just kind of shake it off after a while and then go back and continue fighting the fire. Uh, that uh, union hook and ladder, like I said, it didn't last long, about five years. And then there was also a new union hook and ladder that was organized back in 1876. The next uh, town that kind of came along with a fire company came around in 1875, that being the borough of Dunmore. Unfortunately, this company that they was organized, it was called the Excelsior. They ran a few uh, balls to uh, raise some funds, but really didn't get off the ground and disappeared. And there wasn't another fire company until 1885. In 1885, it was, I believe, in, in March of 1885, a group of teenagers, they were all about ages 12, 13, 14 years old, they got together and organized what is today the Dunmore Fire Department. They called the company the Columbias, and a week later they changed the name to Independent. Now the Independents went to the uh, Dunmore Councilman and wanted to be known as, uh, wanted to be recognized as the Burroughs Fire Company. And basically laughed them out of the place Said, told the kids, uh, listen, 
Uh, if you want our, your parents to talk to us, fine, but you're out of here. And they kicked them out of council. And actually, uh, it was not until 1887 that Dunmore got its first official fire company as recognized by the borough, even though from 1885, the independents were fighting fires, the kids were running out, uh, they had their apparatus, uh, a gentleman by the name of Victor Burchill, uh, he had, his family had a plot of land uh, right down the street from where the borough building is now. Uh, many might remember the giant market in Dunmore. That's where the Burchill's property was. Uh, right now it houses a part of St. Joseph's uh, Children's Center uh, over in that area. But uh, the Independence Firehouse was actually located on the same property where the Pizza Hut is now in Dunmore. Hmm. And that building lasted until about 1840s, 1850s when the new borough building was built. Uh, but uh, Victor built the first piece of apparatus in his barn. Uh, he took an old carriage and modified it, put a garden hose on it. That was the first piece of apparatus for them. Uh, the I mentioned that the first company or, uh, recognized by the borough of Dunmore came in 1887, but surprisingly, it wasn't the Independents. It was actually the uh, Neptunes. And it was the Neptune Chemical Company who built a firehouse at Dunmore Corners, which was also the scene of some of the most devastating fires in the borough of Dunmore over the years, including the Neptune Firehouse. Uh, it just happened to burn down uh, a few years after it was organized. And then they relocated to the point, if you're familiar with Dunmore Corners and the Fidelity Bank, uh, right behind the Fidelity Bank on Blakely Street, uh, where the drive through was of the bank, that's where the Neptunes were located. And uh, they had battles early on, as did up here in Carbondale. Uh, battles were famous uh, between the fire companies because it was a bit ma matter of pride for the companies to show up at a call before everyone else. Uh, here in Carbondale, when the Mitchells organized in 1892, they would show up before they got their their uh, hose wagon, they would show up at fires with uh, squirt guns and umbrellas and taunt the Columbias while they were fighting fires. Uh, down in Dunmore at one point, uh, the Neptunes uh, arrived on scene and the independents who were kind of having a, having a party showed up also and one of the firefighters who was a little intoxicated got into a fight with uh, the guys from the Neptune and the police had to break them up. Down in Scranton, in the olden days, there was a point where uh, the fire companies were battling a large fire at uh, a building downtown. After the fire was over with, uh, one of the companies decided, we're gonna see if we could shoot the stream over the, over the building. Well, they started pumping and shot the stream over the building, not really realizing that another fire company was around the corner and ended up getting soaked. Uh, <laughs> Both fire companies then came to blows and there were rocks thrown and there was fights going and there were also arrests made. Uh, after the three big towns, you're, it, surprisingly enough, the next fire company that showed up around that time was in 1885. On, in the same week that the independents organized, the Crystal Fire Company in German was the next company to organize. And then uh, over the years, we've had other fire companies that have uh, popped up throughout the valley. Uh, we look at some of the towns now and they're usually served by one, but if you look, uh, there were a lot more fire companies that kind of disappeared over the years. Uh, just in the three that I mentioned already, Carbondale ended up having over 20 fire companies in its history. Uh, Scranton had 67 fire companies. And then uh, I also mentioned the Manuka Hose Company which is now part of Scranton, had three versions of their own company. And Dunmore had 13 fire companies. Look at some of the other towns, um, Dixon City, uh, who I'm doing some research on now, they had six companies. The Eagle uh, Host Company, which is the company that still stands in Dixon City and Priceburg, as part of it was known way back when, uh, disbanded uh, for a time in the early 1900s as uh there was a fire in uh, Priceburg 
And as the Eagles ended up coming to the scene of the fire, part of the blaze ended up uh, burning the hemp rope that was holding the lights uh, up on the pole. And it ended up coming and electrocuting and killing the horse while burning the uh, hose wagon and also electrocuting the firefighter. The firefighter survived, the horse died, and there was a lawsuit that went on for a good uh, five or six years. And at one point, the Eagles disbanded. And the only fire company in Dixon City was the Joseph B. Dixons, uh, who surprisingly, they were the company that uh, was, was strong back then, and they are nowhere to be found at, you know, now. Uh, also, some of the other uh, companies in the Mid Valley that I'm working on right now, Oliphant had 11 fire companies, and a lot of companies over in the Oliphant area were spike companies for the companies that exist now. And then you also had um, over in Blakely, Peckville, five. Jessup had uh, six. Uh, and then so you've got some of your other ones, which are the newest ones come, of course, up in the North Pocono area and some of the Abington area. Uh, that gives you an idea of the early days of the uh, firefighting or fire companies here in Lackawanna County. So. Thank you, Joe. That's some, that's some really great information. I think the teenagers in Dunmore deserve some kind of prize or a plaque for something. That's, that's Yeah, really it's neat. amazing. It's amazing these days where, you know, teenagers sometimes get a bad rap that you see, you know, that they're the ones that, you know, have, you know, organized something that's still in, in existence today. Yeah, that's, that's really neat. Um, I will turn it over um, for a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, um, please, please chime in if you, if you have, if you have questions for Joe. It just amazes me that four fire companies burned down. You, you oh, there were more than four. No, but you um, mentioned just two in Carmen, and one in Scranton, and one in uh, Dunmore, I guess. Yes, in Dunmore. But uh, just a little thing, uh, Wilson Host Company in Peckville, uh, in their horse-drawn days, uh, their firehouse burned down during a large fire in Peckville. And the wild thing at that point is that the horses – were so used to either hearing the alarm or if they smelled smoke that they would get in position. Well, the firehouse was on fire. They smelled smoke. They backed themselves into the firehouse where the wagon was and they ended up dying in the fire. Um, Joe, is there a reason why so many fire companies were called Neptune? Phoenix, I could see that makes sense, but Nept is there a reason why so many of them use, use Neptune? Well, Neptune being the, uh, what is the, uh, God of the water. Greek god of water. The god of water. Yeah, that's yeah. where it came from. And uh, you know, going back, I guess, uh, like I said, Carbondale had one of them. And when uh, C. W. Rosler left Carbondale for Scranton, uh, he was one of the—I believe he was one of the organizers of the Carbondale Company. So he took the name to Scranton. And then when Neptune Number One. Uh, did away with themselves down there and then they reorganized it was a lot of the members i guess in Southside that uh took it over and uh they just kept the name that way like the well, i wanted to extend a thank you uh you probably don't remember but several years ago my daughter and i visited back and uh you were kind enough to help us uh with jessup uh, hose company number two where my my grandfather and uncle helps we're founding members in 1921, and you, you, we had some vague references that they had helped found a fire company, but we had no idea. You, you gave us the reference material, helped us uh, find the right places to read, and you were, you were one of the highlights of our trip across the country. So I wanted to say thank you from Salem, Oregon, for the the history that you helped bring to our family. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, the surprising thing is that there was actually another Jessup number two back around 1900. Uh, they only lasted for a few years, and right now I am hopefully working on uh, my next book, which is on the Mid Valley and will and should include Jessup. It all depends on uh, what you know how things get, and if they don't get too out of hand. If it if it does, it's going to be split up into two different books. Very good. Right. Um, I'm open for anything else. 
if nobody has has anything else, um, Joe, again, thank you very much for that that excellent information. Tune in our next our next Lackawanna Pastimes program will be on August twenty first, um, be two Fridays from now, and we'll be joined by Julie Esty as the founder of the Dearly, Dearly Departed Players, um, who are well known for their Dunmore Cemetery tour. So we're moving a little bit into into some fall themed programming, maybe. Um, and hopes that it'll be a little bit cooler um, as we as we head toward fall. So again, thank you everybody for for tuning in. Um, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Pine, um, for joining us from from Oregon and your and your comments. It's all, always nice that, to know that we we spread the knowledge around. Um, I'm, I'm glad you were glad you were able to to join us today. Thank you.